Hi everybody, it's Janine over at Slow Happy Vintage. I'm sitting on my porch on this rainy Saturday morning. I did get a chance to go out yard sailing today and I found some really cool things that I want to show you. Well, here we are with another group of things that I found while out yard sailing. I have three different yard sails represented here and we'll start with the first one. This was a moving sail and uh, total spend on this sail was $35. I am so excited about some of these things. I'll try to go through them quickly because I know um, some of these videos get kind of long. But this is a little fossil pendant that I will need to stick on a chain. And then there's a beautiful brooch made by Jomez. And this is a silver... I'm not sure what this little crest is here. I'm going to have to look that up. It's not marked, but it's pretty cute. Got some Florida leaves, uh, two of them. This one needs some repair. I do have some pieces in here that need some repair. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on at the actual repair process. Uh, this one is gold filled, and this one is just a little scatter pin. And I have some very interesting cufflinks that are also not marked. And I believe this is a pendant. I'll have to test that stone. Uh, this is from Thailand. It is sterling. And some earrings that are brass and sterling. They are marked JC, which I believe uh, is Jeep Collins. And then we have some Hattie Carnegie chandelier earrings, AB coating on these. They're really pretty. All right, and then along with the more rhinestones, I've got a lot of clear rhinestones in here. These are not marked, but they're cute little, I guess they hang this way. And then some more. These are just beautiful. The sparkle on these is fantastic. More clip earrings, vintage. Actually, oh, this is Weiss. I didn't know that these are marked. It's a Weiss, it's a Weiss set, beautiful. Should have known, the quality on these are just amazing. Um, this little silver, sterling silver pendant marked Bars. And then a couple little enamel and faux pearl. This one also needs a new pearl. Put that in there pretty quickly. And then I have a couple, oh, this little pin. I don't know what this little pin is. If anybody knows what this is, let me know in the comments. It looks like cloisonne. Um, it is not marked. It's a C clasp. It's fairly old, but it's a very interesting little pin. This is marked Wells. All of these are just amazing vintage pieces. So this necklace set right here is a Vendome Demiperer, AB crystals, lots of fun beads on here with little rondelles and bead caps. And I have the matching earrings as well. So um, just a lovely necklace. Another 1950s vintage necklace. And the necklace and earrings both are marked Vendome. And then I have another Demi Perrier that is marked Tan. I am not familiar with Tan. This is a very, really nice little choker necklace that has matching dangle clip earrings. Okay. These right here are Hattie Carnegie pins. They're very old. Um, they are a prince and queen, I believe. They're just phenomenal, beautiful pieces. I do need to fix this one. It is missing its pin back, but this one is intact and they are marked Hattie Carnegie. And then this is a Boucher. Now, I'm told that these bouchets are hand carved. I do not know what material this is made out of, but I am not sure if this is damaged or not. I've looked at several of them online, and because they're hand carved, there is a little bit of variation on all of them. I can't decide if this piece right here is damaged, though. So when I do list this, I'm, I'm not planning on keeping this piece. <laughs> I keep an awful lot of them in my own collection. Um, I will need to note that I'm not sure about whether or not this is damaged or not. It it looks intact, but I just kind of question it. And when I got this, this leaf was bent completely back. You can kind of see there's a little mark on here where 
uh, where there was a fold, so I had to very gently fix that one to bring it back to its original shape. Beautiful, very rare Boucher piece right here. Marked Boucher right there. And then lastly with this little guy, he was so cute, uh, sleeper piece on this one. I just put him in my pile. I believe he's gold. In fact, let's test him. Let's test him right now. Let me find my stone. Find a very discreet place to test him. Maybe right there. I'm just going to use the 14. I'll test, start with 14. And... I'm getting some flashback from some old things I had on there. Nope, it's holding fast. So yeah, my little guy is gold. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is not eating up the gold. So we have a little goldfish here. Ha! Huh, goldfish. He's a goldfish. I also wanted to test him with my diamond test. Fired up the Presidium, and we're going to test a couple of stones here. First, my little fish. He's got some shiny little eyes there, and I'm wondering if it's diamond because I believe, like we just tested, that the fish is gold. So putting my tester on there, look at that. All right, so we have a literal goldfish here with a diamond eye. Wonderful, not bad for a $35 haul. And then I wanted to see if this stone is anything as well. So we'll test this stone testing in the topaz range so it looks like we have blue topaz on there and I'm not sure this is probably onyx but I don't know how the presidium reacts to onyx if at all it takes it out of the glass range so I'm assuming that this is going to be an onyx onyx silver and blue topaz nice that's always exciting Set this aside and move on to our next. So this morning I went to a couple of sales and this first one I spent $5. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot, but when I saw this necklace right here, this is an enamel, I think you pronounce it guilloche. That's that funny enamel there. It's hand painted floral on that enamel. Gold tone Y drop pendant necklace. Uh, it is a locket. Cute little, cute little locket with a barrel clasp. Anytime you see a barrel clasp like this, you're going to note that it is an older piece. And also this type of chain, if you look really closely at this chain, there are little tiny indent indentations on the chain itself. It's just a little decorative element that I always see this on like West German pieces, sometimes Czech pieces. Uh, it's just a special chain that they seem to use, but I really like this. I might have to keep this one. I, I always want to keep so many of them. That's the fun part of this. All right, then these are just bizarre. They, <laughs> they are Adam and Eve earrings. There's an apple down here. There's Eve and Adam um, with an apple outline here. I'm not sure these feel like they're pewter. I don't think they're silver. They're not marked or anything, but they're they're cute little earrings. But I'd never seen anything like that, so that's kind of fun. And then I found this pink crystal. Uh, it's glass. It's a heavy glass AB coated necklace. It's the shine on this is beautiful. And I have a pair of earrings that would match this beautifully from if you watch, I think it was my last video I showed them. So that's a really beautiful piece. And then lastly from this sale, my whopping five dollars, I found these very delicate. I'm not sure what these are made out of. I think they're porcelain, but I've never, you know, I see these a lot. But I've never found ones that don't look like they have any damage on them. I always pass them up because they're usually quite damaged. But these guys are beautiful. They've got callas and roses and little forget-me-nots on them. Really pretty earrings. So that was the $5 haul. And then today I'm very excited about this one as well. I went to another estate sale and I think I spent $10 here. I bought a couple of hard goods, like this, this enameled mug from Czechoslovakia. 
my dog is, my dog is having a good time on the floor behind me. <laughs> so this is a beautiful little enamel cup. Um, and then I also bought some vintage flocked Christmas ornaments. This Winnie the Pooh is from my daughter. Shh, don't tell her. I don't think she knows where my YouTube channel is, but that's going to go to her. And then these little guys, little flocked Christmas ornaments. He's missing an eyeball, but very cute. I've got four of them, and they're just adorable. So those guys came in this group. And, and the other thing that I bought was this very old nativity ornament made in Hong Kong. And I believe these are celluloid. It has a little bit of damage. It's missing one of the wise men right here. And then it's missing one or two sheep, probably two sheep. But it's still a very cute piece. Oh, look, I just noticed it's missing the very tip of the Christmas tree on the roof, too. So anyway, they are fragile pieces. So I'm not surprised that it has a little bit of damage but if I decide to sell that I'll just note it and see if anybody is interested because these are pretty hard to come by and on to the jewelry this lady she was there she had collected a lot of jewelry over the years a lot of 50s jewelry so these little pins are from the 50s and then this one is in perfect condition look at how beautiful that one is and then this one I think is my favorite old Santa Claus. Do need to replace one, two, three, four, five rhinestones, but that shouldn't be difficult at all. Once again, if you want to see how I do that, let me know in the comments and I will think about putting together a how to fix or replace rhinestone and jewels. And then I got a little strawberry. It's not marked, but there is a little bit of discoloration here. I'm not sure if I need to replace the stones or uh, just leave it as is. I might just leave it as it is. And then a couple of enamel floral earrings. And then I got this single earring just because there was no match, but this stone is just beautiful. It's got, I don't know what you call that kind of stone, but it's so pretty. And I figure if I had something that needs a, a beautiful cabochon, I'd pull that stone out and stick it in there. Like I said, I always like to buy interesting stones for replacement work. Okay, and then I found another fleur de lis. This one is gold filled, and it also has a little loop to use as a watch fob chain if you wanted to do that. Then I have a scepter stick pin. This one is also not marked. The detail on the scepters is just really, really nice. And then this necklace, I looked it up and I was not sure what it was. And of course, I sent a picture to my friend Casey. Here I'm mentioning you again, Casey, over at All's Vintage Market. And off the top of her head, she said, oh yeah, Carl made those for Knott's Berry Farm. And I happened to be, I, I grew up not far from Knott's Berry Farm. And so I'm sure this was probably sold in Virginia's gift shop in at Knott's Berry Farm an old uh, acorn necklace. Beautiful detail on this, this piece. Um, and here's the Coro little dangle. And then some cloisonne earrings with butterflies on them. Very nice detail on these as well. And what am I forgetting? Oh, huh. I'm wearing one of them. Uh, this bracelet was there too. This bracelet, I absolutely love it. I Now I have a piece that is signed uh, Goldette that looks very similar to this, but Florenza also made pieces like this. So I do not know if this is Florenza or Goldette or somebody else because it is not marked. It has a safety chain. And then uh, the last thing, oh, this piece was part of that necklace. I don't know if it broke or what, but I don't know if I can put it back on there. I'll have to see if the necklace is uh, long enough. It could have been an earring. I don't know. All right, and then this is just an interesting piece. It's got like a little uh, twig looking loop and then a, a very intricate filigree heart hanging from it. It is a hook clasp, so also pretty old. 
and also has that chain that I'm talking that I was talking to you about with the little cross hatches in it. All right, so that is it. I just am having some really good luck at garage sales lately. So, like I said, this haul that I just went over was uh, $10, including the cup and the ornaments, and then $5 and a whopping $30 for the big one that I started out the video with. So in the comments, let me know what your favorite is, uh, what you'd like to see in future videos, and just say hi. Like to, I always like to meet new jewelry people. I just wanted to interject here that the first yard sale that I went to with a $30, $30 amount of jewelry, there was no jewelry out at that yard sale. It was all tools and housewares and things. And as I was chatting with the homeowners, I told them that when I'm at yard sale, I'm, I'm always looking for jewelry, costume jewelry in particular. And I asked if they had any. And the lady said, oh yeah, I've got some, let me go get it. And she brought it out and I got to look through it. And I made the pile of things that I was interested in and we figured out a price and there you have it. So the moral to the story is always ask. It never hurts to ask. You never know what they might have that they haven't put out. If you want to just hear simple jewelry talk, stuff about reselling, maybe about dogs and miniature horses, like and subscribe. I'm your girl. Here's another look at all the great things I found this weekend. When I do the math, it comes out to be, I think it was less than $1.30 a piece. So pretty amazing finds. I just am having a great time. My collection is growing and my sales are growing too. I'm gonna to leave this video with a couple of images of recent sales from eBay. All right, thanks for watching and I hope you're having a great weekend.